The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. So, um, good day, everyone. This is Lois Pace from the Global Health Council. I want to welcome you to um, our fall webinar series around um, the global financing facility. I know it's been um, a few months since we've um, last come together, and uh, a number of things have happened um, in the past few months that we want to update you on. But um, more importantly, we are looking forward to um, the next IG meeting and thought that this would be a good time as it has been um, in um, uh, months past to update the community um, with regards to that agenda and uh, receive any inputs from civil society um, before going into that meeting. We also want to take this opportunity to update everyone on um, the CSCG activities to date, and we have a number of speakers who um, have made themselves available to do just that. Uh, and so uh, without further ado, I would um, like to go ahead um, and invite Aminu to um, provide an overview of the IG agenda, as well as uh, civil society um, consult consulting group activities. I, I want to remind people that there is a chat box um, as a part of the platform, and so if, as you do hear updates from Aminu or others, please go ahead and include your questions in the chat box on the side. We'll see those um, and direct those uh, accordingly. Uh, so Aminu, take it away. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Luis. And uh, I hope people like me. Okay, uh, thank you so much. So, uh, let me begin by congratulating us once more again uh, for this wonderful interaction and to also thank Global Health Council and the, uh, the PMNCH for having another opportunity to organize this uh, conversation. And also, we, we look forward to uh, fruitful deliberation in whatever we are uh, planning to do. So uh, as we all know that uh, in the next uh, few days, the, there's going to be a pre-investors group meeting of CSOs in Maputo, and also the IG meeting is also going to uh, be conducted in the same uh, Maputo one uh, one day after we complete the the pre IG uh, meeting of the of the CSOs, and uh, typical of the of those meetings of the IG, uh, without going through the agenda line by line, I want to mention some key uh, aspect of the agenda that concern the CSOs. There are a lot of documents that during the uh, IG meeting. Uh, they are going to be discussed thoroughly, and some will be reviewed, approved, or endorsed. One of the key documents is the GFF result framework, which I believe some of you or all of you have already uh, seen a copy. If you haven't seen, you please email Kadi to get a, a copy. It is a comprehensive uh, document that is detailing the result framework, how the GFF is going to be uh, review and score uh, uh, in, in 2016, 2017, and 2018, and 2019. And some of the indicators are related to uh, country head financing mechanism, implementation of the investment case, and also how the multi-stakeholder platform is supporting uh, discussion at the country level and engaging all the relevant stakeholders to fully participate. The key principle of that uh, conversation is the issue of uh, inclusiveness, transparency, accountability, and participation. So that result framework will be discussed during the IG meeting. Then another key uh, important document that we are also going to uh, discuss uh, in the IG is also the country updates. As you are also aware, during every IG meeting, there's a comprehensive uh, presentation uh, being done by the GFF Secretariat, which is uh, 
called the, the country portfolio updates, which in that update also every country that is being involved in the GFF, uh, there's going to be some key highlights, what they have done, what they are planning to do, what are the key success story and some few challenges. We, uh, hopefully also Kadi could share that also before the IG meeting, if that is allowed, but it's also going to be discussed and reviewed. And uh, it's amazing to note that a lot of countries have made uh, good progress in engaging with stakeholders, especially the CSOs, and also involving the private sector and the young people. Then the last item I want to mention also uh, about the document uh, is the issue of uh, the replenishment. As you are also aware, uh, during the ONGA meeting uh, in New York, the JFF has launched the $2 billion acts for the replenishment of the trust fund. So that conversation is also going to be presented uh, during the IG meeting. Uh, there are two structures that are already established right now, which we need to be aware. One of them is the replenishment leadership reference group, which are a group of individuals coming together to be supporting and tracking the progress of what is going on and engaging donors to uh, fully commit money. We're happy to note that the first contributor is the BMGF, which has already put in $200 million to the trust fund during the ONGA meeting. The second structure is the, uh, the, the second structure is the CSO co-group of the replenishment, uh, which the, the two IG rep, myself and Angela, uh, PMNCH, uh, one campaign and Save the Children, uh, the UK, and also some few supporting team from the BFGF formed the, uh, the co-group of the CSO for the replenishment. And in, basically, we'll also be having regular meetings with the Secretariat to know how CSO will be fully participating in supporting replenishment, not only at the global level, but also at the regional and country level. Then the last item I want to mention in the agenda, the biggest one for us is the G, uh, CSO implementation costed plan. As you are also aware, after the IG meeting in April, the IG endorsed and approved our own GFF CSO engagement strategy and tax us to develop an implementation plan which is costed that could be also that will be discussed in the member IG review approve and discuss and also explore how it is going to be funded so right now I'm happy to inform uh, this gathering that the the plan is already available it was costed by we the CSO and everybody here and the uh, it's already we already shared a copy to the secretariat and we are going to present the the plan and the plan detail what we could do at the country level in supporting CSO to engage meaningfully and what we could do at the regional level to provide overall coordination of the CSO and what, what we could do at the global level in engaging the secretariat the investors group and the trust fund uh, committee uh, Kadi will also share that document to all the uh, coordinating group after this meeting, the revised final version that is, has already gone to the JFF Secretariat. So this is basically, uh, in summary, the agenda of the uh, IG meeting, and also uh, just in few lines before I, uh, I allow Louis to uh, to come back, is that in terms of activities of the coordinating group after the IG meeting and uh, after developing the first zero draft of the the plan, we organize country consultation uh, in six countries uh, so far to go through the implementation plan and also uh, make input that will help us to finalize. I want to mention uh, the key countries that we are aware has done consultation, Nigeria, Cameroon, uh, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Tanzania, and Kenya. These countries have uh, uh, went ahead to organize uh, consultation uh, to review this plan and provide input as far as the role of the local CSO are concerned. Mozambique will be organizing their consultation on the 10th of November, so I want to also mention that. And please, any country who has done uh, consultation that I have not mentioned or is planned to do, please inform us when you are making your uh, contribution. But we found those consultations very relevant 
to our discussion. And what we are going to present this, that success story uh, of that consultation during the IG meeting to inform the team what we had been doing with the little funding that we are gathering from different uh, partners. Before the IG meeting, lastly, we're going to have the pre-CSO IG meeting, another big uh, event that we are proud of. In that meeting on the, uh, the, the 6th and 7th of November in Maputo, we are going to organize panel session where the countries that are implementing GFM, the CSO, will be giving us a, an update of what they are doing, what they have done so far, where are the entry point for advocacy, and what, what we could support them in terms of technical support. And also we'll be discussing a country level scorecard that will, is going to monitor implementation of the investment case and also the health financing agenda of every country. In that meeting, we'll be sharing a scorecard template that will be reviewed and we hope to build consensus of the framing for a scorecard. And after that meeting, we'll be supporting each country that has expressed interest to use the scorecard to know how to uh, enter data, how to do the scoring, and also use the scorecard for uh, engaging with the country multi-stakeholder uh, platform. So uh, let me stop here, uh, Luis, uh, in case there's going to be any uh, further composition. And I'm happy to come back again to clarify any issue or any question that somebody uh, might have. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Amini. We very much appreciate that, that update. Um, we don't have any questions just yet, but I know that um, Kadi is also available to provide some, some additional comments. Uh, and so perhaps we'll go ahead and turn the floor to Kadi. And then for the couple of questions that are now coming in on our end, um, we'll turn it uh, uh, over for um, questions. But first, first and foremost, um, Kadi, how about you go ahead um, and provide any additional information um, to what Aminu shared. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Lois. I, just to say, I, I think Aminu did a brilliant job in, in summarizing what's been happening over the past couple of months. Um, so just notes to partners on the call. Obviously, the IG is taking place next week on uh, from the 7th to the 9th. So if anyone has comments after this call that they would like to get us um, issues that need to be raised. We're open to um, getting everyone's feedback and experiences and engaging in countries. If there's anything that they want raised, uh, please do send us an email and we'll be collating input uh, throughout the week to um, to make sure that that, that gets to the right um, participants. Also to note partners that have had the, the chance or haven't had the chance to be engaged in the national consultations or um, to be in touch with the, the focal points and countries. We will also share the list of participants for the people attending the regional meeting next week with everyone in the, um, the core group. Uh, so do feel free to reach out to any of them for outcomes of what might have been the national consultations or whether they want to, to sort of raise issues that they would like to have um, come in to, to the workshop next week. Um, and, and, and I think that, uh, th that all in all, uh, Aminu has laid it out, there is an implementation plan that we hope will be endorsed and provide a, a basis for resource mobilization. Um, but, but we're extremely um, uh, uh, sort of proud to see how much civil society activity there has been um, in countries to date. Thank you, Kadi. And I think you actually answered uh, at least one question in your additional comments. Again, the, um, the meeting um, next week is the 7th to 9th, and so please go ahead and send any comments you have before then. I think in addition, um, there's someone from Save the Children Germany who is wondering about where to find uh, the GFF results framework and other documents. I think, Amin, you mentioned that um, Kadi would be circulating um, um, some details around uh, or recirculating details around the civil society um, engagement strategy and implementation plan as well as some other um, documents following the call and so um, you'll receive that um, there hereafter. I don't see other questions here now, so I would like to open the floor up um, to other um, people on the call who have joined us. Um, we have, a, again, a number of uh, rep, civil society representatives uh, available today um, to, provide, to provide additional comments on their sense of the process um, and its 
um, relevance or importance to civil society, some other pieces to keep in mind. Um, so I'd like to open the floor up now um, to others uh, in our um, in the civil society coordinating group who would like to weigh in. Yeah, thanks, Lois. Um, it's Chris Armstrong here, if I may. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Go yeah, ahead. Hi. Yeah, hi, everyone. My name is Chris Armstrong. I'm with Plan International Canada. I'm an alternate member, CSO member to the investors group. Uh, I think Aminu and, and Katty have done a nice job of sort of giving an overview of the of the agenda for the meeting. I thought it might be useful just to give my two cents worth on a, on a couple of things. I think, uh, as, as Aminu mentioned, you know, obviously our emphasis as civil society will be in getting our implementation, costed implementation plan approved and to advocate for it and to work with, work with the investors group uh, and the GFF secretariat on getting it funded. Um, but I, I think it's important for us to note that I, probably the, the biggest emphasis at the meeting in my mind will be around the replenishment issue. And I, I, and I mean, we went into, uh, into it quite a bit, and I think I, I would just over uh, again emphasize that there is an expectation and a hope that civil society will play a meaningful role in the replenishment. And I won't go into the details, but there is a presentation that I think um, it will be done at the will be done at the investors group meeting on the sort of uh, on the replenishment process. And they're they're um, very particular in, in pointing out the role that civil society can play both in terms of providing advice, uh, doing advocacy and messaging around the, the, um, the GFF, uh, ensuring accountability, working in our capitals. So for those of us in, in donor, uh, donor countries, working in capitals to, to advocate for the GFF, using our regular coordination calls to talk about replenishment and how can we support the replenishment effort. So I think there is a, you know, if we want, uh, if we want strong support for our implementation plan, we need to be able to show our value added and I think there will be a particular um, look, at, look at civil society in terms of our, the role that we can play uh, in the replenishment. With respect to our, uh, our implementation plan, um, again, it's, it, it's quite detailed. Uh, I think the costing is very good, but uh, I'll always look to, to more input. I think one of the things that I've heard consistently from investors group uh, members that I have um, spoken to uh, more on the donor side is is a real desire to, not to create new structures, not to create new mechanisms, and the importance in the same way that the GFF GFF puts importance on alignment at country level, that we also align the work that we do um, with civil society at country level with other initiatives that are happening among civil society and country. I think of thing, and it's it's mentioned in the paper, alignment with GAVI mechanisms, global fund mechanisms, the Sun uh, the Sun movement. Uh, in country, and so that's been repeated over and over again. So again, we need to be able to demonstrate uh, at a country level that we're that we're we're well coordinated, we're well aligned. We're not we're not duplicating anything. We're not creating new mechanisms where new mechanisms aren't uh, aren't needed. Uh, the last thing I'll say um, is that I, I did note on the on the agenda that the selection of of new countries eligible for the GFF. Uh, is is being discussed and there's an information update on the process for selection of those new countries. So for those who are interested in that, it may be worth having a look at, at the criteria that have been put forward for that, that selection. I'll stop there. Thanks. Great. Thanks very much, Chris. Appreciate that. Uh, I think next we're going to turn to John, um, especially given um, I don't believe Angela is on. Um, John, how about you go ahead and make additional comments? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is John Townsend, and I'm uh, an alternate like Chris. Um, and I wanted to go back to uh, one of the points that Aminu made. He was talking about the, the principles uh, about uh, how, how we work. And I wanted to point out that some of these efforts go back to the Paris Declaration on Aid Effectiveness, where both uh, the bank processes and the GFF processes are, are, are go back to the issues of country ownership, uh, alignment of donors around these objectives, the harmonization, how you coordinate and simplify procedures to avoid duplication, how they focus on results and mutual accountability. So part of the work of the implementation plan is to do that, but I would add that we, we look beyond that, I think, into two, two specific issues, and these are issues raised by the APRA Agenda for Action in 2008. One is, one is inclusive partnership. I think the, 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 the 
the uh, Accra Agenda for Action highlighted that all the partners, including governments, donors, foundations, private society, uh, and civil society should participate fully. So this isn't an addendum uh, to a, a development effort. It's, it should be integrated, integral part of the development process. And I would think also a model for the future. How will, how will these efforts contribute to universal health coverage? How will civil society, the voices of, of, of communities and potential beneficiaries engage? The, the second point that I wanted to highlight that's linked to this is capacity development. How does our civil society ever build the capacity of countries, all those participants, to manage their own future and health? We know that that uh, uh, that in the future, uh, health will be probably a mixed market with public and private uh, and with civil society groups engaging in that. And so in some ways, the work we're doing should begin to prepare the skills of all the participants to be able to make a healthy environment for uh, for delivery of, of critical care, universal health coverage, and and everybody ought to be able to participate in that at a skilled level. Thank you. Thanks very much, John, for those remarks. I think um, hearing from you and Chris um, following Aminu and Kadi was very very helpful and added a lot to the to the discussion. It seems at least from the questions that people feel good about what they've heard so far. Um, again, just a couple of requests for follow-up documents, which we'll be able to um, forward to those who have registered or otherwise participated in the webinar today. Um, so I think what I might do at this point is hand it back um, to Kadi uh, to talk a little bit more about uh, next steps, if there's anything else that you would like to add before we officially um, close out everything. Yes, of course. So as you all know, um, there will be an opportunity for you to hear what uh, transpired at the IG meeting. We'll be holding the next webinar on the 15th of November, where we'll be able to update you about whether the implementation plan um, was approved, uh, what the decisions are on um, the various papers that are for discussion and, and, for, um, and for decision at the IG meeting. Um, in the meantime, we will send you, so ahead of the, the meetings next week, documentation on the workshop that we're organizing, the participants that will be attending, the background documents and presentations so that you have all of those. Um, we will also send the background documents for uh, the IG meeting, which are for um, uh, consultation purposes only, so it can't be sent out broader than the, the, the core group, but can be sent to the core group. Um, and then afterwards, we will send a summary of what transpired at the workshop. Um, and that, I think, will be very interesting to participants on this call because it'll include an update on um, what the different civil society groups in countries are planning to do around the GFF. And, and we hope that um, that'll pr provide a, a sort of basis for, for coalesced action um, around that. So expect a few uh, bits and pieces from us over the next couple of weeks. And I think that's it. Great. Thank you, Kadi. Um, thanks to everyone actually who made themselves available for this call and in particular those um, who who weighed in and spoke up on the call um, thank you to all of the participants as well um, i hope that you found this informative and engaging um, we apologize for a couple people who said they have sound have had sound issues hopefully that will come out better in the recording i don't think we've detected anything on our end um, but again these webinars are made available um, after um, they're closed uh, and so ideally the recording will come the sound will come through better on the recording um, as Kadi mentioned um, we'll be following up with all the documentation um, around uh, the meetings next week uh, and so look forward to that as well as to our next call on the uh, 15th of uh, November thank you again and I hope everyone has a good rest of your week thank you thank you everyone thank you Thank you.